Laos will host its Southeast Asian neighbours for the ASEAN summit tomorrow. CNA's Leong Waikit ropes in his Thai and Indonesian counterparts. Or that success are Sambat and Saifu Bara Ismail, as well as political observers to explain how the leaders, new and old, might change the bloc's dynamics with different approaches to different issues. ASEAN was founded more than 50 years ago. And in the last five decades, some member states have gone through leadership changes. And for the first time, there's a multi-generational leadership within the bloc. Prime Minister, the Prime Ministers of Cambodia, Thailand and Singapore are younger than some of their ASEAN counterparts, whose ages range between 58 and 78. PM Khun Manet and Lawrence Wong are Generation X, while PM Petong Tan Chinawat is a millennial. As the organisation gets older, you get new blood in to bring new ideas, more innovative approaches. There's always uh, strength in diversity, diversity in ideas and approaches. New Prime Ministers from Singapore and Thailand are set to make their debut at the upcoming ASEAN Summit. What will they bring to the table and what will their priorities be? I think he certainly would want to demonstrate that Singapore is a constructive player you know, within ASEAN, right? So even though there's a change of leadership, you know, the continuity, continuity of Singapore's policy towards ASEAN, right? And, and, and of course, ASEAN occupies, you know, a, a, a very important part, uh, you know, within Singapore's foreign policy. Thailand has its second government in just as many years, led by Prime Minister Patong Tan Shinawat. Does that name sound familiar to you? Well, indeed, the 30-year-old is the youngest daughter of Thaksin, ex-premier from the 2000s and an influential figure. And Thailand's foreign policy bears his handwriting too. The foreign minister, Marit Seng Yampong, is a close confidant of Thaksin, so therefore we can expect more of the same foreign policy since the last government mainly focused on foreign investment. Thailand sees itself as a friend to all, an enemy to none. So therefore, the oldest ally of the United States in the region is increasingly becoming non-aligned. Also taking the non-alignment path is Indonesia, as foreign policy appears to be a central area of focus for President-elect Prabowo Subianto's administration after a leadership transition later this year. But President-elect Prabowo Subianto's approach to international relations may be different. He's expected to be bolder and more active in diplomacy in pursuing Indonesia's interests abroad. Uh, Mr. Prabowo has already visited at least 20 countries since becoming President-elect. The visits have also been very pragmatic in nature. For example, Mr. Prabowo visited Russia in July, an itinerary choice which was widely considered a signal to the world that his leadership will not shy away from making friends with anyone that benefits Indonesia, even though it may be seen as unpopular. On the Israel-Hamas war, Mr. Prabowo's views and ideas on Gaza, such as sending peacekeeping troops, irrespective of their feasibility, also point to a president who will be taking a more active foreign policy stance. And further into the horizon, Timor Leste is slowly moving towards full membership in the 10-nation bloc. Delhi was admitted in principle as ASEAN's 11th member in 2022. Timor has to bring colour to the grouping. They've been attending ASEAN meetings for a while now, so the leaders are quite comfortable with Timor Leste's leaders. I don't think that the dynamics will be um, so imbalanced. I do think that Timor Leste joining the group will bring a different set of dynamics that can be positive for the grouping. You know, in terms of, you know, openly discussing some of those more uncomfortable issues like human rights and so on. The diversity and leadership changes might seem to threaten ASEAN centrality. But experts say leaders are likely to prioritise the bloc's interests over their own. There are hundreds of meetings um, every year. Um, there are programmes, you know, that that take place, uh, you know, bilaterally as well as multilaterally within um, ASEAN. So, in my view, I would say that even if there are pressing concerns in an, in in a member state's uh, foreign policy, um, they would also want to see how ASEAN can play a part in in, in, in enabling them to meet their own 
foreign policy objectives. Experts say hopes are high that leadership changes can inject fresh ideas in ongoing challenges. And while the bloc will start examining internal challenges like maritime disputes and the Myanmar crisis, it's unlikely it would make significant progress on a range of broader geopolitical issues. Leong Wekit, CNA.